Alma, no be small to you know. Hello everyone. Uh good evening. Uh welcome to what do I call it now? Nothing. Welcome to Aisha's page. Let me put it that way. Uh it's it's absolutely unbelievable what just happened. I was on a uh, on a program, a live program, Galaxy TV. They invited they called invited me yesterday. And for me, I'm always one who, uh, even though I saw on Twitter, now somebody said to me, who, who, who watches that, uh, who, who they watch that TV? I'm always one that feel that, you know, everybody should be given an opportunity. And I don't base interviews on, uh, oh, because this is a small, small platform. This is a bigger platform. You, you talk to people on bigger uh, platform and then you don't. So I just feel like I try as much as possible, even though it's a whole lot tax scheme, you have to. And he just called me in, you know, yesterday and for this interview and I went in there. Doing this interview, uh, we we're talking, uh, he first of all asked me, you know, about the nation and everything, the abduction, I said something. Then this uh, journalist says to me, oh, that there have been unconfirmed reports that girls have been brought back, the Jengebe girls have been brought back, that don't I think I should praise the, I should praise the government? I should comment that that was his word. I should comment the government. And I said to him, no, I, I don't, I, okay, what I said to him was that, look, when he is abducted, and then he's returned by government. Maybe then I will praise uh, the, the, the government and commend the government because it's it's lives of citizens. Nobody ought to have been abducted in the first place. And here are citizens; they've been abducted, and you're telling me to commend, you know, to commend the the, the, the government. And so we left that. We, we, we went on. He now asks the question about whether. Who, why is it that we still have this insecurity? We say it hasn't been tackled. And I say it's as simple as I say it is because of the incompetence of the president and the commander in chief that we have. I mean, you have somebody who is clueless in office. You have somebody who doesn't have capacity. And yet you don't want to talk about it. And it comes to me that, oh no, that uh, the office of the president, you cannot say the pres office, office of the president is incompetent. That's supposed to be a journalist. A journalist who is supposed to have learned English, at least he's a journalist in English, right? They, they teach him language, the language that he'll be, he'll, be, he'll be talking about. So when you say so, somebody is incompetent, that means he's not doing his job competently, and that's why there's still insecurity that he's asking me about. And he goes on, and I was like, no, the office of the citizen is the highest office in the land. And right now he's of, uh, insulting my own office of the uh, citizen by telling me that I'm, I'm, I have to use civil words. Because when he invited me, it wasn't about me being uncivil. And so he invited me as a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and not as a slave of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And my office, as a, as, a, as a member of the office, as somebody who occupies the office of the citizen, is higher than the office of the president. And so nobody has a right to say that when the president is incompetent, that we would not say he's incompetent. Nobody has the right to say that when the president is corrupt, we will not say that the president uh, is, is, is corrupt. Nobody has the right to say that when the president has shown ineptitude, that we will not say that he's inept. And nobody can tell us that when the president is, in, uh, is, uh, is showing cluelessness, that we should not, we should not uh, call him clueless. We are more worried. Our media has been cowed. They are afraid of NBC, and they are censoring. The, the, uh, they want to censor citizens' uh, words and what we say. What kind of nonsense is that? Media is supposed to be the, 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 the is it what do they uh, call it? Uh, the fourth realm of the estate, right? That's what they call them. Because the media is so powerful that even though it's not a formal arm of government, it's seen as an informer. They are the ones that are supposed to, you know, checkmate the government and be the voices of the people and voices of conscience. And we have some, me, the media in Nigeria, the journalists, sorry, let me put on my glasses. I thought, you know, I'm trying to feel a bit, uh, I'm not too old. Uh, but then I really can't see the, all the comments and everything because I'm wearing. Exactly, Chris, you said it all. Thank God for social media. That's the reason why they're trying so hard to, 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 to put a ban on social media, to be able to censor social media. Social media has allowed media to be democratized. I don't need to be on any station. Even the interview I had with our child, I had to say, look, me, if you're calling me for an interview, I'm not going to be, my words are not going to be censored. And you're not going to tell me how and the manner in which I will address the president that was voted for by the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You're not going to come and tell me the way I will address somebody who is supposed to be number one public servant. The servant, there's a reason for the servant attached to the public. So you can, you can, if you can, if you're going to censor yourself and be cowards and not do anything, that's your personal business. But for Galaxy TV to think that they will bring me on air 
and begin to tell me how I should address the president and tell me that I should commend the president or I should commend the government, they are sick. Absolutely sick. And they never see persuaded and say that they're sick. They never say, I don't need to be on your platform to be heard. That's the reason why this is not 1983. This is not 1984 where we wait for news at uh, 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 7 a.m. and wait for the other news at uh, 9 p.m. Government will come out and tell us this is it. They will just read things out to us and they will move away. They will go away. It is no longer like that, though. It is not like that at all. This is 21st century. This is 2021 where we have things like social media and we have technology helping us and we can beam our broadcast to anywhere i mean how many people even knew that uh, i was uh, on galaxy like somebody said how many people even watch galaxy but i'm one person that i just treat people equally i don't believe oh because this is a smaller platform you shouldn't be there and then you have to go on the one uh that uh that that, that it is it's, it's a bigger platform i see people on uh, this thing trying to Okay, okay, I think I need to do something. I need to... Oh, God, I've forgotten how this thing works now. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm the one uh, sending the request. Now, I see people who are saying they want to be on the, this thing. It's so, it's so annoying. It's really so annoying. So people come, and we're going to be slaves because we cannot call the president. What? The president is incompetent, and his incompetence is costing us lots of lives. It's costing us a whole lot in this country, and nobody is going to make us not say it, and that's the fact. And if the president doesn't want us to call him incompetent, then what he needs to do is to begin to act competently and give good governance and be accountable and be transparent. He came to tell me that, oh, Gerber Shehu and, and the spokesperson, spokespeople of the president have said that, uh, that uh, it is the body language of the president for him not to come out and, and speak. The, me, Mr. President, Mohamed Buhari does not have the right to, to a style. Okay, now it is his style. He does not have the right to his style. If he wants to have a personal style, he should go back to Dora and stay there and have his personal style. As long as he's, he's, a federal, he's the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as long as he's, he's the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, he does not have a style. He, what he must have is the style of the people. And that is for him to speak to the people, to come out and speak, to come out and do the needful, to come out and lead competently and not to be leading incompetently. If it was the style of the president not to speak, why did he go around the 36 states and federal capital to, 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 to cam uh, campaign for votes? During campaign, why, does it, why, why don't he stay at home? Why is it that he never stays at home? It's only when it is time for governors that he knows that he has time. Umbo, we are not paying him to have time. He can, it's not for him to have time. We are paying his bills. We are taking care of him. And he needs to listen to the people. Hello, how are you? Good evening. I'm blessed, my sister. Thank you for your passion and your fire. It is needed. It is always needed. And it will be needed until the nonsense is stopped. Absolutely. So no matter the nonsense that they talk about censorship. And those people, for us who have ears to listen and ears to see, the people who want to censor the truth, you know what they are doing. You know what energy they are working with. You know how they feel about us. They clearly don't feel that they are us. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to tell. If you've got eyes to see and ears to listen, they don't want you to tell the truth, knowing what's happened the other day. What's been happening for hundreds of years? So they want it to continue. That's what people need to realize. It's not just that they're censoring the sister here. Mm. They are censoring progress. Mm. They are censoring progress. They don't want progress. They want the same nonsense, corruption, everyday death, everyday murder, everyday, everyday bullying. They, these people don't talk about the truth. But we want the same things. That's what people, we need to understand that as well. It's not just Aisha. Aisha's not alone. There's how many of us? I'm in England. There's people all around the world. How much Nigerians are in America? Mm. How long have they been there? It's not just Aisha. So we need to, I give thanks for your life, Aisha. You continue Thank you. doing what you need to do. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. One of the things that we must absolutely realize is that, first of all, in Nigeria, we are citizens, we are not slaves. And nobody is going to make us slaves in our own country. And, not, and most especially not those that were voted into office. People stood on the line to vote for them. And you get into office, you think you can lord it over us. And especially this media. Media that has turned itself to brown envelope uh, 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 profession. 
So because you're giving brand envelope, because they're going to come and tell you that they will find you and everything, all you need to do is that, oh, you begin to, uh, uh, to, to uh, how do I uh, be slaves to, to the people in government. When government officials will come, they will be saying nonsense in your office. They will be abusing our sensibilities, but the media will not say anything. They will be smiling with them. They will be open, opening their teeth for them. They will be opening their teeth for them. That's, that's all they know how to do. But when it is when they see fellow citizens that they open their eye. You can't open your eye for me. But no, 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 not at all. For waiting now, do I look like I need to be on your TV to be, to be seen? I did you a favor by being there. I don't need to be there. I have my handles. Social media has allowed media to be democratized. All of us, we can speak and people will hear from different uh, parts. And the way you just come, you're telling me that, oh, you, you can't come here and say the president is incompetent. When the president is incompetent, are you okay? If you don't, if you've not, if when you were taught, you didn't learn English, go back and check the dictionary meaning of incompetence. Go back and check it. When the president is incompetent, we will call him incompetent. And a president that does not want to be called incompetent should stop acting incompetently. It's as simple as that. The same breath you are using to ask me that, why is it that the insecurity has not stopped? The same breath you are using to ask me that, why is it that people, why is it that people are still being kidnapped in this manner? And you are using the same breath to tell me that, oh, I shouldn't say the president is incompetent. What is it? Oh, I should say the president is fine. Oh, the president is good. The good call. Good, good you there see me as I sit down here so you don't tell me that kind of thing so wait till happen. I look at person I look at person where, where, where they look for something I look, look at person where they look for food where you go chop hunger they keep person now only slim person go slim that but I, I, I even want slim that before the way done too much now I still get a uh, 15 kg where I want suppose where I suppose drop so if now hunger maybe hunger the wire person what's the meaning of this we have a media that is as useless as useless can be you sit down there, these government officials will come into your, 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 your studio, they will, they, will, they will talk all sorts of nonsense. You will never caution them and censor them and tell them not to abuse the sensibilities of the people that put them in office, the people whose money is being used to pay them. And then it is when citizens come, you'll be asking them, what is the solution? The president, you don't answer what to be the solution. I mean, not be, not be the reason why they put them there to be that. I mean, after they do siren for them, now you just say they ask, I may come there. Yeah? You just say that do Cyrus. I beg. I say get people we want we want come Jared. Let me even look for who I, I go add. For those of you that want to be uh, cowards, go ahead or feel free. It's your life. The one thing that I know for sure is that more this more. No, 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 no. My mouth is is too big for somebody to be for squeezing into a place. And we we, we just can't uh, continue like, like this. And we know where people just come and then they feel that, oh, they can just treat us anyhow. They can talk to us anyhow. They can behave anyhow and they get away with it. No, 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 no. That's not possible at all. You know, I, I saw you just now. I was just trying to uh, bring you on and add you and see. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, we get to uh, make this. And it, it just has to stop. Our media must live up to its responsibility. And the responsibility of media is to be the voice of the people, is to be the conscience of the people. It's not the, uh, it's not the responsibility of a media to be the voice of the government. It's not the responsibility of media to stand for government or looking for people that will comment government. It's not the responsibility of media to bring, have guests in your studio and you are telling them that why is it that they are not commending the, the government? Why should I commend the government? What have they done that I'm going to come? Even if they have done something, it's not my business to commend them. That's the reason why they have spokesperson. You are telling me you, you are comfortable. You are sitting in your studio as a journalist. Oh, of your said you are comfortably telling me that, oh, the spokesperson to the president has said that it's not the president's style to address the nation. It's not the president's style to speak to the nation. And you are okay with that. Galaxy TV, you need to do better. That's why people are asking me who they watch Galaxy TV before. Uh, you know, I just saw you coming now, and then uh, uh, you just went. Uh, let me say, if I see that, I hope I got that right, uh, coming in. Uh, so I'm, I'm live on
From school, do we understand the trauma that they have gone through? Do you understand the stress they have gone through? Do we understand that children all over in Nigeria, or in when they go to school, that they are saying our children are developing post-traumatic post stress disorder because we've been a nation that has not been able to protect them? And here we are, people are thinking, are, are concerned that the president, that they call the president incompetent. The president is incompetent. The president is clueless. The president is corrupt. The president is inept. The president is a failure. If you like, hit your head on the wall. And if the president doesn't want us to call him all of those things, then he should change. He can become competent when he begins to act competently. We will call you become clueful when he has clue about what is going on. He will, be, will no longer be called inept when he no longer shows ineptitude. He will no longer be called clueless when he no when 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 he no he is no longer uh, he no longer exhibit cluelessness. And if he stops his corruption, we will not call him corrupt. The president is also callous, heartless, irresponsible, and pathetic. And these are facts. Day before yesterday, seven military officers, some of them young, young, young people. Some of, I saw one that was born 1996. He's just about three years older than my first child. He died. One of them was born uh, 1973, I think around uh, towards the end, a few months older than myself. He was on that plane that died. Nigerians from across different states were represented. They died. They were buried in Abuja, yet the president did not leave Villa to come and be at their burial. When Abu Ali was brought in, the whole nation was mourning, was brought in from, uh, flown in from Maiduguri to be buried in Abuja. The president did not come out. He went to, 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 to go and do election in, in, in Edo State. When it is time to campaign and hold people's hand, he will be there. And then Brass State will still start a, a campaign, right? They will still start this thing. You will see the president will carry his two left legs and go and go there and go and campaign and be talking uh, uh, for, for, for them to be voted. But yet, when it comes to governance, he's nowhere to be found. And then we are told that that is his body language, uh, that is his style, and we should accept that that is his style. No, it cannot. The president cannot afford his style. We have, we are the ones that employed him. We are the ones to dictate to him what, what, what kind of style he should have or not have. And for the media to come and try to uh, censor people, that will not be accept acceptable. You're calling, you say something, somebody will come and tell you that, oh, you're, you're not supposed to say this on here. Are you okay? We're not supposed to say it on here. Are, are you calling me to your studio for me to come and speak the language you want to hear? Or are you calling me to your studio for you to hear what my views are? If my views are the president is incompetent, those are my views, that the president is incompetent. If you want people to come to the studio to come and be praising government so that government will give you uh, a tap on the shoulder, then don't call Aisha and Siki to your studio. Because I won't take that nonsense at all. Not at all. I'm not a slave in this country. I'm a citizen of this country. These same people oppressed our parents. They are oppressing us. And we allow them to oppress our children. No way. That oppression must stop. That oppression must absolutely stop. Solomon Soheid, absolutely. It's for us okay. We will speak out. We will not keep quiet for anyone. We will not be cowards. And anybody that wants a coward should never, ever, ever invite an Aisha Yesiki to your, to your studio. I don't need to be seen on TV. I don't need TV. Me, I stay on my own. I don't need anybody. I don't want to hear anybody. Because if I want to do more, I, will do, I have my social media handles. I have places. If I do video, I will send it. People will share it. I don't need to be on your TV to be heard. My voice, I can be heard. Even if I don't do this, if I sit down here and do my video and send it, they will see it. So why are you calling me to come here if you don't want to hear my views? Why are you calling me to be on your, on, on your, on your program if you're, you want me to come there and hear the, uh, the, the what, what do you call it now? The views that you want the government, that you want to hear and the government to hear. 
Honestly, our journalists, our media should wake up and realize that they are not slaves. I've asked this question before. Where is NUJ? Your people have been turned to slaves. Your members have been turned to slaves. They have been turned into something shabby, and you're doing absolutely nothing about it. You sit down there. You call yourself journalists. It's maybe probably to collect whatever money it is that you collect. They are oppressed, and you're never there for them. Even during the military, people spoke. Media stood. Talk less of now that we have a democracy. We have a democracy that somebody will come, out, come here and want to lord it over us. No, 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 no way. You can go and lord it to people in Daurao. Those are say don't turn themselves to the MUU, MUU. If you go there, go meet them. Oh, nobody here. Nobody here. This country where we get all of us get down. No Nigerian is more Nigerian than any Nigerian. And nobody is going to come here and try to make us uh, this thing. It's, it's Galaxy, that's what they call themselves. It's Galaxy uh, uh, TV. I, look, I, 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 I didn't even know they were on even uh, DSTV. It's a friend of mine that was telling me that this, honestly, this time, my food. You cannot, the president cannot afford any star. We are the ones to tell him the kind of star you are. The day he wants to do is that go and be a private citizen. I'm a private citizen. I can afford star. This is my star. But the day I ask Nigerians to vote for me and I enter office, that is the day I no longer have star. I have to listen to the people and give the people competence. And if you cannot give the people competence, get out. And where you are not giving that competence and you're still there, we will call you incompetent. If there's anything more than incompetent, we will call you that. And if you don't want to hear that, then change your ways. People are dying and you're, you're sitting down in your, in your studio with that and you're more interested in, oh, the president is being called incompetent. Really? Really? Oh, you shouldn't call the president the office of the president. Oh, God. Now your office big, but you are a human being, not a slave you be. Stop being MUU, MUU after there. You sit down there. Kinapa go carry you for there. They don't go ask you say whether you know call president uh, president so incompetent. Say they don't collect ransom for your hand. People are being taken away, and you're here busy saying the things that you you're saying. Honestly, that, that's that's an absolute. Honestly, that's really an absolute. It's really so so annoying, and it was for me. I just felt that that was, and I just said, well. I was speaking, he kept coming back to cut me off. I was going, I just said to him, you know what? No, wala. I can't be in this state. You say, because there's no how you're going to tell, ask me a question that why is it that, uh, what is, why, why is it that we're still having these insecurities in prison? And then the answer to it, you're telling me that I can't tell you that the reason is because we have an incompetent president, because that's, and commander in chief, that's just the reason. And I just said to him, you know what? Bye. I'm done. I'm not going to be here doing this. Bye bye. I moved it. And I have, I have a uh, media has been democratized. I said, okay, let me come to Instagram and Facebook. Let me do. Journalism is completely dead in Nigeria, and it's only in Nigeria journalists want to impress the ruling government. Despicable and disgusting. Say, ask the Philippine King. I mean, honestly, journalism is dead in Nigeria. See, see what media did to Donald Trump. See the way they are. See CNN, the way, in short, even the journalists themselves, they had their own opinion. It's not as if they're even talking to say, oh, it's the guest that came in that has an opinion. No, 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 no. See what uh, CNN was doing to Donald Trump. They sat down there. Oh, my. They have not even got Hey, sorry, please. There was no light before. This one that I'm sweating like a Christmas ghost. I'll put on AC. In short, sometimes I'll be like, oh my, I was, I'll be watching CNN when they are talking about Donald President Trump, when he was the former president, when he was president, I'm like, oh, more, come and see journalists. Our own, we sit down, government officials will come, they will practically insult them and insult the people of Nigeria. They will be smiling, uh, they will be smiling sheepishly, uh, your excellency. How do you call somebody who hasn't done an excellent job, excellency? You want me to call uh, Buhari excellency, God forbid. God forbid. I only call him incompetent because that's what he has done. You'll be calling somebody distinguished, somebody that has not distinguished himself distinguished. You'll be calling somebody that is a coward distinguished. How? You'll be calling your hon uh, honorable, somebody that has behaved dishonorably. I, I, I don't do psychopathy. I'm not a slave. Or I'm a citizen. And I know that my office is higher. The government derives its power from the people. The people must understand that fact. The government derives its power from the people. And that's, a, and that's a, 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 what it is. And if you do not understand that your office is higher than the office of the president, then sorry for you. 
especially when you are media. These are things you ought to have learned. You are a media, you are not a spokesperson for the, for the government. You are not there to make the government look good. You are not there to get guests that will make the government look good. And if you think that, oh, you will come to my, uh, it's me that you tell, oh, don't say this to the president, that you kept interrupting me, don't call the president incompetent, don't call the president incompetent. And then you use that to go and show them and say that, oh, Aisha came on my show and I told her not to tell the president incompetent and she didn't call the president. You're, in short, they are nyag by women. You know, say, get some time when you say something that for your language, you didn't talk and yak ba we no mean say they break the door for your mouth. Na me want say na me want say shy that shy at all at all. It will end them. We'll continue to speak out. We'll continue to make demands. We are citizens of this country. We are not slaves, and that's it. And anybody that does not understand that, sorry for you. And before I round up now, I want to say that sadly, Nigeria has become a nation where people are afraid to speak. Nigeria has become a nation where people are afraid of their shadows. Nigeria has become a nation where becoming a Christian is no longer a matter of who, but a matter of where. Nigeria has become a nation where there is no peace. Because according to Man Ani Wukemi, who he said, Nigeria will know no peace until the child of nobody becomes somebody without knowing anybody. And today we have a country where the child of nobody cannot become somebody without knowing anybody. They want to perpetually keep us as slaves. And that's the reason why they do all, all, they do all they can to shut down the voices that speak out. They have done all they can to ensure that media is cowed, is made to not be that conscious of the people, that voice of the people. Every one of us must know that we all must be active citizens. Nigeria does not need active need active citizens and as much as we can we must ensure that we are that active citizen there's no opposition anywhere you and i are the opposition and you and i have to stand for nigeria you and i have to be there many people will say that what is there to fight for in nigeria everything whether you're in nigeria or you are out of nigeria having a great nation means everything and we all must come together and fight for that we cannot afford to continue to allow things to be this way. Where only a few come down and they want to rule over us. They want to trample on, on our rights. They want to take us away. The moment we say something, we are arrested. I wish you made a comment and called out the government and they use DSS to arrest you. Where is the DSS when she call bitch is busy? Where is the DSS when she call is insulting the president? Where is the DSS when she call is insulting everyone in force? Where is DSS when it comes to the terrorists that have been terrorizing the nation? Where is DSS when it comes to the killer headset? Where is DSS when it comes to kidnappers? Where is DSS when it comes to the criminals? And the DSS will come if only citizens that who have who have allowed themselves, who are law abiding, that they come after. The reason why we are law abiding is not because we cannot take off arms, but it's because it is better to be law abiding citizens. And in this country, where today you have a situation whereby terrorists are treated as patriots and protesters are treated as traitors, we all need to be active citizens. And we must stop this bad governance that we have here. We must ensure that we are citizens who are not only heard, but who have occupied their offices of the citizens, who know their rights, and who, of course, know that they are not slaves. Children are being taken away every day. Don't wait until it is your own turn before you feel something and begin to do something. Yesterday's victims were one survivors. Today's victims were yesterday's survivors, and tomorrow's victims will be today's survivors. The question I always ask is, who is next? Who is going to get that phone call that says your child's school has been attacked? Many will say, God forbid. But even those whose children have been taken away, they once said, God forbid. When, Chib when Buniyadi happened, Chibok, Chibok never knew to be their turn. When Chibok happened, Potiskun voice never knew it was going to be their turn. When Potiskun happened, Dabchi never knew it was going to be their turn. When Kankara happened, Kagara never knew it was going to be their turn. When Kagara happened, Jengebe never knew it was going to be their turn. And Jengebe happened, whose turn is going to be? We don't know. And here we are. We have journalists coming out to tell us that we should not call out a president who has failed every one of us. A president who has made a country at, 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 its, at its knees and then 
took the country to know its needs. A president who has further divided the country. A president who has caused more insecurity. A president who has caused more economic hardship. A president who has caused more out of school children. A president who has caused more in infant mortality and maternal mortality. A president who on every industry has failed completely, a total failure, and an incompetent president. And yet, they don't want us to stay here. We are citizens. We are not slaves. And we continue to call out the incompetence, faillessness, corruption, ineptity, and failure of the president. We will also call out the carelessness, the heartlessness, the irresponsibility, and the pathetic nature of the president, where people are being killed, he does nothing, he says nothing, where he never cares about the plight of the people who voted him, most especially the poor that, we, that have always been there with him. From 2003, when he decided to run for office, he ran for 12 years, nobody voted for him. Only his, only his pity race that he lived in him. And even that big race, he hasn't been there for them. For 12 years, he kept running to come and make out those hardships. And you say we should not call out his incompetence. We will. Thank you so much for listening to me. And remember, no Nigerian is more Nigerian than any 